What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is another episode of Versus. In this episode, we're covering Nerf targets. What makes the best Nerf target to shoot at? Of course, pew-pewing at your buddies or at Zambies is preferred, but sometimes you just can't get a game together. So I'm comparing a few of these targets to give you my opinions on them and hopefully to spur your imagination to find other stuff to shoot at. PSA, any living entity that has not given consent to be shot at is not a target. Do not shoot at your pets. That's f***ed up. Oh, but it's just a Nerf dart. Psychological terror, bro. What if your parents randomly woke you up in like with a pillow fight? They're not causing you damage, but you wouldn't be able to sleep for like a week turning into a rant. But it just drives me mad when people see my cats on video and they say, oh, Frank, shoot at your cats. No, douche. That's not Q. PSA. Okay, over. Let's get back to the video. <laughs> Cups, a camo tent, a Velcro target, electronic target, zombie strike inflatable, and Matt's mom. These are the targets I'm comparing. Before I talk a bunch, let's get out to the range so you can see them all in action. Lego. We're on the range here, ready to go. I've set up the targets, sort of, so I can shoot them all at once so you can immediately compare one to the other. How did I miss that? How unprofessional. So here are the targets. On the left, we have the cups, two stacks, and then one little one in the back, the normal little ammo catcher thing. The electronic thing, when I engage that, I'll turn it on because it runs on a timer. I can't have it on right now. Then the little Velcro target thing up on the back wall, then some blaster boards. Now the two orange ones are reactive targets, and then these are set up as uh, paddle targets up on the top. So when I shoot them, they'll fall down. But then I have to go reset them as opposed to these orange ones, which I can just keep pew-pewing all day. Then I have the two inflatables. Now this is the zombie strike target. This is not a nerf target. <laughs> That is uh, Matt's mom, and some of you guys have commented, I've linked to that for the last like year or so in those huge text walls on the description box. When I link to like a hundred things, I usually inject that somewhere in the middle of some of those description boxes, and some of you guys have found it and thought, what the F, why is Coop linking to that? Foreshadowing, lay brosif, and that's why. So I can compare it to a normal inflatable. Many of you saw it in my last video, it's not a sex doll because there's no way to enter that. It's a love doll, so I think you're supposed to just hug it and the zombie strike one is, is more of a human width, so that would actually be a better love doll than that little scrawny thing that's like six inch diameter. Talk about unrealistic proportions, like that's worse than Barbie, man. I don't want to hug a six inch diameter girl. Funny backstory on the love doll. So I bought it when I was planning this video right after Hurricane Irma. So I was staying with my parents and naturally, right when I placed the order on Amazon, my father walks into the room, sees the monitor and is just, like, what are you doing on Amazon looking at a love doll? I told him my idea to compare it to the normal zombie strike inflatable. The first thing he says is not, it, it's a sex doll or anything like that, but it's kind of sexist, isn't it? Because you're shooting at a woman. It's because it's a female. What if it were a male? That'd be disgusting. I don't want that in my house. And only by coincidence is the target hanging by the neck because the engineering of this inflatable cameraman zoom on in here. The, the balance of this thing, I tried to hang it by its arms and its waist, but it flops forward. The balance is awful, and it's not designed to stand up for some odd reason. It's designed to, like, lay down. I wonder why. So hanging by the neck is not supposed to be symbolic of, like, hanging the, the love doll, and especially not anything against women or men. Um, that's just the best way to display the target. 60-minute um, intermission on the love doll. Back to the target shooting. So I have the rival Hera with a few, um, or Hera, Hera. Right after Hura, I immediately think, my name is Hiro Nakamura. Save the Chile, save the world. <laughs> my name is Hiro Nakamura. I'm from the future. You have to save her. What girl? The cheerleader. Excellent first season. You should probably just stop at the first season. It just goes a little bit downhill, off topic. And by a little bit downhill, I mean right off the cliff. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Rival uh, magazines preloaded with the Hura. So I can uh, pew pew. Let's start with some uh, cup targets. So cup targets. Are we ready, bros? That was pretty gratifying. And the sound, it's so explosive. Just <laughs> it sounds even more glorious in slow-mo. Yeah, everything sounds better in slow-mo. Everything sounds better in slow-mo. Now onward to the boring one. Um, camo target, not reactive. I'm just shooting right, right into the sock. Blowing the load right, I'll stop there. <laughs> 
very rarely do any bounce out, but that's not as much fun to like shoot at as a target. I'm typically shooting into that when I'm test firing a blaster and I'm just paying attention to the firing characteristics like after a mod or something. Not as much fun to pew pew at like a target range style thing. So uh, let's go with the um, target up there. Now I'll test fire it as it was intended, like by design. You're supposed to use these little Velcro things. that don't Velcro. Is Velcro a verb? <laughs> now it is, okay. Stick, that's the word I was looking for. But without those, it's just, um, you know, a cool looking target. And here we go. Huh. Feel like I'm in a carnival. You know, like rolling those balls up that like chute and then it goes whoop whoop right into that little the, the target that looks exactly like that. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't you agree that I would be awesome to design the sound effects for, for all those games instead of like ding, ding, ding and pinball to have my voice going whoop, 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 pew, 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 whoop, whoop. Yeah, I should start a petition or just design a soundboard. So that's that target, um, you know, probably what you were expecting. I'll turn this guy on. Now I've read the directions, but I, F, okay, I forget where the on button is. Give me a sec. <laughs> okay, shut up. Okay, modes are just... Oh, oh, it's counting down. Let's count. Okay, let's go. Oh, okay. Great time for a jam. Yeah. F, two balls in one hole. I'll stop there. A hundred points. I'm going to play again to see if I can beat that. Ready, go. Oh, okay. Oh. A hundred points again. Are they just not registering? Because this, this middle one counts as 50 points. These orange ones are 20 and these four paddles out here are 10. hundred points, that, that's really not that high. But even with really accurate rival blasters, I'm only like, I don't know, 15, 20 feet away. It's difficult to hit that thing. If the electronic target were the size of that back one up there, it would be more fun. But if, if you're shooting normal nerf darts at it and not rival rounds, you won't even be able to hit it. Like it'll be a good shot, like a hundred point score for just hitting anywhere on the target. I mean, damn, that's the size of a rival round. Like, just, just barely. So, you, you know my opinion on that one. It's not positive. I didn't load enough magazines. Whew. Rid it do. Electronic target, done. Let's get to the blaster boards. So, I uh, will start with the, rea the, the paddle targets up at the top because they look super cool to fall. And the targets themselves are actually just the normal boards like this. They're just connected in a cool way with the little blue connector so when you hit them, they fall down. Um, so you have to manually reset it, but it is more substantial of a reaction than the little orange thing spinning. Okay, so let's uh, pew pew those. Okay, bonus points for getting that in the back, like a ricochet. Oh man, had I been trying that, that would have been freaking sweet. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Ricochet kills, man. Friendly fire up in here. So yeah, those, those are fun to shoot. Um, but then you have to walk all the way over there to reset them and uh, don't make me do stuff. <laughs> Although resetting is way easier than the uh, paper cups. As opposed to these reactive targets, which were designed for nerf darts, not rival rounds, which is why some of, sometimes the, these things disconnect and break off when I'm shooting at them with higher velocity blasters, which, you know, I'll probably demonstrate right now. No, having too much fun. Let's reload, bro. Let's do it. Yeah, so when you hit them, they spin to let you know that you hit them. If you're like even further away, that, that's really gratifying. As opposed to like these three targets where when you hit them, you can see that you hit it there, but it doesn't give you that confirming like movement or, you know, whatever. Feels good to be positively rewarded. It's classic conditioning. And that lets you know, you know, it conditions your sniper status instincts. So boom, Freud, you knew, if, you, you knew your What would Freud say about the, the shape of that target? Because <laughs> it, it looks like a dick, okay. <laughs> Gotta reload. Getting to the inflatables, like the Zambi Strike uh, target, as well as um, Matt's mom. So the sound effect they make is like kind of like a hit marker. So you know you hit it, 
but you don't know exactly where because it does have some point indicators, 2500, 50, 75, plus the Z, if that's like bonus points. It's odd that that's styled in the exact same way as the target. Huh, that's weird. Cameraman, zoom on in here. These are all points on the Zambi. This one is on the floor or on the ground, not on the Zambi skin. So that's a miss, but the target styling, you see like the perimeter plus the little crosshairs, it's the same. That's the Zambies trying to make you miss, trying to get into your head. That's what that is. Mind games. Whew. Talking about the psychological mind games. Holy crap. Okay. Um, so you have the, the sound effect, but you don't know where you hit it. So if you ever tried to compete with your buddy and say, hey, I'm going to hit the 25, there's really no way to know that you hit it unless you have a slow-mo camera handy. Slow-mo camera handy. Slow-mo camera candy. What did I... It's not even like late night right now. I'm just in a mood. And Matt's mom is the same principle, just without the uh, target indicators. And she should make a sound uh, when, when you hit her. Or, not her. When I, when I give her that gender, then I'm being sexist because I have a woman on a noose. Okay, this video is so going to get flagged for inappropriate content. <laughs> oh. But um, let's pew pew these guys. In the face. Hit the, hit the Z there. That one's too much fun. Is there like an upgrade to the her? Yes, there is. Let's do it, bro. Oh yeah, oh yeah. In the face. Okay, yeah, reloading doesn't take any time at all. It's just too much fun. Sniper status. In the face, in the face. First, that guy who, who photobombs newscasters. That guy, you know what he says. It's not gonna be said on this channel. Though. <laughs> and that's flag for spam. <laughs> Woo! Oh, in the, yeah, in the face, in the face, in the face, yeah. <laughs> Tea bag. Now it's like a Halo game, IRL. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's about uh, three or 400 balls that I have to pick up now, all over the place. Except the ones that I blew into the sock, um, or the, <laughs> the, you know what I'm saying. That is the range test of the targets. Back to you, other Frank. Let's do it. Thanks, Range Frank. Now I'm gonna go over these targets in a little bit more detail to sort of talk about what they are. Starting out with one of the most accessible plastic cups. Many people have these in their kitchen. They're found at most grocery stores. You might have some in your kitchen right now. Keep in mind, once you use them as targets, it might not be so like clean to, to drink out of them after they've fallen on the ground and dust and all your cat hair and nastiness gets all up in there. I have dedicated cups that are target cups that I won't drink out of. They're reactive targets, meaning they move and react. When you shoot them, they fall down. They make an awesome sound. That comes with the disadvantage of the time consumption in resetting them, but an easy to find target for our application. Pros and con list, lay pros, cheap and easily accessible are two awesome pros. Number one con, in my opinion, is the reset time. You have to like build it before you destroy it. Those are the major pros and cons of Lay Cup. Next up is the camo tent. I purchased this on Evike for about 15 US dollars. Evike is an airsoft website. This is designed around airsoft BBs to capture them, but it works wonderfully for our purposes as well. I bought it for about 15 US dollars, so it's pretty affordable. So pros and cons, the major pro, it captures your ammo, making cleanup a breeze. If you blow your whole load right into that sock or th that camo net, it takes like 15 seconds to pick them all up. You just kind of tip the tent into your ammo bucket and you're done. The next pro is it's easy to store. It looks really big and bulky, but it's actually like wire and it's spring loaded to open up. So you can collapse it. Well, I did it on the first try. Holy so you can collapse it and then like slide it. I, I put it in between shelves so it takes up very little space. Yeah, I know. I'm just waving my arms around randomly, aren't I? Because it's camouflage. Get it? I'll stop now. 
But leading into the cons, in my opinion, the biggest con is it is non-reactive, meaning when you shoot into it, it doesn't ding, make a fun noise, fall over like cups, or do anything special. It just kind of eats your darts and they disappear into the abyss. Man, when I say it like that, that sounds even cooler than a reactive target. And they disappear into the abyss. But you know, it's gratifying to have a ding or some type of like reaction. That is the camo tent, ammo capturing device thing. <laughs> Official names are official. <laughs> Next up is the Velcro target thing. This was totally an impulse purchase, not planned for this video, but it's Nerf, because it has the Nerf logo, uh, so I bought it. I paid about 20 US dollars and purchased it at a local Target. It was, again, an impulse purchase. I said $15 is affordable for the camo tent because that's a dedicated ammo catching device, and for $15, I think it does a good job. But this is not a complex device at all, so I would say the 20 US dollars I paid for it is kind of expensive. I'd say I overpaid, definitely. So to the pros and cons, first pro, it's cool looking. So it has that going for it. It's also really easy to set up, sort of. And getting to the cons, it's non-reactive. It would be cool if I had tagger darts or a Velcro tipped dart because it could stick to it and that's that's fun. But when using standard darts or Nerf rival rounds, the rounds just bounce off so it's, it's not reactive, it's kind of boring. And the last con for what you're getting, I think it's expensive, so you know. Yeah, that is the Velcro target. Next is the Nerf electronic target, this thing. Nerf released one of these a while back with the dart tag gun. Um, it was like probably over 10 years ago. It wasn't very good. And it's about the same like as this one and, it, and it's not very good either. I paid about 20 US dollars for this one and I would say it's, it, it performs as I was expecting it to but that being compared to everything else in this video it doesn't do a very good job at what it's supposed to do. Quickly going over the pros because the cons greatly outweigh them in this case. It's interactive and it helps you keep score which is kind of cool if you're shooting with a buddy but if you have a buddy next to you Shoot at them and have them shoot you. It's way more fun than shooting at anything stationary. But to the cons, it's really little. It's like less than a foot in diameter. And for a Nerf target, that's just simply way too small. My firing demo was at a really close range and with a rival blaster. And I still wasn't hitting the target every time I pulled the trigger. So if you're firing a standard Nerf gun, like with Nerf Elite darts, Good luck, bro. Like, unless you're five feet away, not even a chance. If there was a super big scaled up version, it would be pretty cool, but that would cost like $100. And then, I mean, that's $100 for a target. Find somebody on Craigslist and pay them $10 an hour to nerf with you for 10 hours instead of buying that target. The next con is very much my opinion, but the cost. $20 for a target system like this isn't really overpriced, but because it's so small, it's not usable. So regardless of the cost, it's kind of a wash no matter what. Even if you paid $5, I'd say, you know, you still can't use it. It doesn't really matter. So you still wasted five bucks. Go to Taco Bell and have, you know, a, a lunch. One exception is if you are a total sniper and you just hit everything with like super lead accuracy, hitting, hitting tiny targets, then that target's all, all you need, bro. Or you could go buy some matchsticks and like set them up. <laughs> but that is the Nerf electronic target. Next item, the blaster boards. I've used these in a few of my videos. I built a giant castle and I've used them as targets during my firing demos because they're excellent targets. But it is worth noting, these are technically fort boards. Blaster boards haven't really been launched, so if you go into Amazon, you type in blaster boards, you might not find anything. So search fort boards if you're looking for this style board. The blue and orange reactive targets that spin aren't yet available, I don't think. To the pros, super fun to assemble, and you can kind of assemble it however you'd like. Getting to pro number two, they're customizable. If you want to target in a particular form, you can build it that way. And if you have enough of them, which granted it does get expensive, you can have a target, and then when people are there to nerf with you, you, you create a barrier and then it's a fort when you're shooting at people. Where is it? Where is it? Accio. Okay. Why don't... Or you can build uh, one of these numbers. This is like a freestanding thing that's a target, but then, you know, I could also set it on like a ledge and make it a big fort. Stick my muzzle out, pew pew, and, you know, do that. Stick it right through. Grrr. Oh, it reminds me of that. What is that, Alien? What film is that when it's like... <laughs> Freaking creepy, man. How are snakes born? Imagine if snakes were born and not hatched, like out of its mom. It'd be like, oh, oh man. Oh, oh that makes me uncomfortable to think about. Oh, snakes are gross. Yeah, autofocus is having a seizure. <laughs> so yeah, blaster boards and fort boards are super fun devices, but getting to the cons, which is a huge obstacle for many people, the cost, they are pretty pricey. The exact cost will depend on precisely what type of configuration you're assembling, but they're expensive. But still a super fun product. So that is the fort board. Getting to the next target, the inflatable by Zombie Strike, which is this thing. I'm not going to do a full review on this product, but it has a little compartment in the base here where you fill up with water and then you blow up the rest of it. And that water acts as like a base so it won't fall over. I haven't put a, a lot of water because I don't really trust a toy grade thing to not leak and spill everywhere. But so far, no leaks and I've, I've kind of abused it. I mean, I meleeed the crap out of it in that firing demo and I've, I've done worse to it. Um, Matt's mom has actually gone at this pretty hard for herself and it hasn't popped. 
and I paid about 20 US dollars for this at Toys R Us, I believe. So to the pros and cons of the Zombie Strike Inflatable. First, it's Nerf brand, and that's cool. Looking at consumer trends on Amazon and elsewhere, people will pay a whole lot more for that Nerf brand compared to any other brand out there. And I feel that Hasbro's worked hard to build up their brand recognition and their brand strength to, to do that. And for $20 as a super effective target, uh, you know, I think it might be a little overpriced because it's non-reactive as I've been constantly complaining about, but I would be worried about buying something like this for 10 US dollars because of that water container. I'm getting a little businessy here. I know Coop's a big sellout because he likes to make a living. Yeah. Anytime I mention money, all those comments rain in. But if they lowered that price down to 10, they'd be cutting corners on the, the contraption that holds all this water. They might be thinning out that material. They might not uh, glue that seam in as well and it might leak. So that's kind of the confidence in buying a Nerf brand thing instead of a Chinese off-brand thing that might leak. And if you don't own your own house and you live with your parents or with somebody else, you might not care if you leak water everywhere, but I would flip it because I worked hard to refloor this floor my, myself. And a water leak, if it like sat and I was asleep or something and it just leaked out and got to sit overnight, it would ruin a bunch of stuff and I'd be, I'd be mad bored. So 20 bucks um, I think is reasonable, but getting to the cons of the Nerf inflatable, I think the non-reactive nature is the biggest con. Are you getting a trend here? I like stuff to move when I, when I shoot it. <laughs> Although the sound it makes when you shoot it, the pop, poop, pop, it is very satisfying. I'll add that to my soundboard. Pop, poop, pop, whoop, 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 pew, 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 whoop, whoop. And the last target, if she's done, are you? Okay. <laughs> Is that too inappropriate? Oh man. Matt's mom. <laughs> My camera's facial tracking things to our two faces. <laughs> You're tricking Panasonic. Ah, the realism. Now's a good time to add, that's not a serious option. It's just supposed to be a joke that I probably pushed a little too hard. If you want an inflatable target, the Zombie Strike one is obviously the go-to. So those are the pros and cons of the listed targets from my opinion or my perspective. And now to Frank's top picks of the ones I've covered today. Not like a one, two, three order, but I do have three. First, if you're shooting at targets and the collection and the other elements that I mentioned aren't a concern, I think cups are the go-to targets. That's what I use in a lot of my videos because they're fun. I think that con of having to pick them up and also set them up is washed out with the awesomeness of them falling down, especially in slow-mo because you know, you can watch it in slow-mo. Number two, if you're test firing a blaster and it's not as much about entertaining yourself by shooting stuff and it's more about testing a mod or testing out a blaster, the camo dart tent is an awesome device, especially for like 15 US dollars. You can fold it up, put it under your bed, put it somewhere else, pop it up when you need it and it captures all the darts. When you're firing a bunch of darts, picking up darts is no fun. Like that's kind of the worst part along with loading magazines. So when you blow your whole load into the sock, you can very quickly clean up and you know, make it, it's more fun that way. Oh my gosh. So that's two categories. If they're targets, if you need to capture the balls, and then the third category, if price is no option, blaster boards are freaking awesome. You can build whatever you want. You can build a whole castle if you want to. You can build little barriers, big barriers, targets of all sorts of sizes. You can make a combo so it can be a barrier and a target. You know, it, you can do whatever you want. Kind of like Lego, they're more of a building block to stretch your imagination rather than a very rigid, like you have to do this. But that cost is a big obstacle for pretty much everyone because they're expensive. So that's it, Frank's top picks for the Nerf targets, along with the firing demo and the overview of all the products. Changed it up, kind of went with a vlog style format, less rigid and stuff. Hopefully it was fun for you guys to watch. I had a blast shooting it, pun intended. Shooting a video, like recording and shooting, like pew pewing, I'll stop. It was funny. Matt's mom agrees, stay in the corner. Okay, that's <laughs> so that's this episode of Versus, kind of a modified format of it, but still target versus target. If you have any requests for future episodes, please leave a comment in the section below. That's this episode. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, bros, stay tactical.